Good morning. Welcome to worship today at St. John's. Uh, we're blessed to gather together and receive God's gifts. We take a few minutes to greet one another and the peace and joy we have together in Christ. And as God has called his baptized children together for worship today, we remember the name that he has placed upon us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. By your protection, we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we have our readings from Holy Scripture. The lesson is from Isaiah, the second chapter. The word that Isaiah... Lord, shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, he shall judge between nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Chapter 13. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime. Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. And in reverence for the Holy Gospel, I invite you to rise as we sing our Alleluia verse. <laughs> Return that you may believe that Jesus is our Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had branches from the trees and Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of Jesus. And the crowd said, This is Nazareth, this temple of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. At this time, we continue with our sermon hymn, hymn 332, Savior of the Nations, come. Thank you.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may be seated. So we have arrived again at the beginning of a new church year. Uh, it's not aligning with our traditional calendars, but the first Sunday of Advent, and Advent is uh, the coming of Jesus. We celebrate kind of the end of the church year, his coming again, uh, and then we begin with his coming uh, as we prepare for Christ coming as a baby. Now, at my last church, I had a gentleman that always kind of struggled with the church calendar. Uh, we'd often have a Bible study, and usually in Bible study, it was probably Lent time where this would really come out. He's like, we just got done uh, celebrating Jesus' birth, and now we're getting ready to kill him again, right? Um, it, it just didn't quite, like, why do we do this, right? Why do we do the church calendar? And uh, the church calendar isn't prescribed by God. It's not necessarily in the scripture you know, do this at certain times, and uh, there's some flexibility. Yet tradition from the church way back has passed on uh, to us kind of this church calendar. And so uh, we kind of try to talk through that a little bit, uh, how it's, yeah, it's not prescribed, but it, it's a tradition that yeah, it has some value in some ways. And so there was that gentleman, and I also had this other gentleman. Uh, I would go to visit him. He was a shut-in, and uh, he would always say this uh, every kind of December time. He'd say, well, Christmas is for the kids, right? Uh, and that's kind of a quote I've, I've used a few times. Maybe I've even used it here, right? Uh, you know, when that's said, I, I get what he's saying, right? Because kids, they're just so excited, right? They, you can just see the one. Uh, that they have, right? But then theologically, you're kind of like, no, <laughs> right? Um, Christmas is for all of us. Uh, Christmas isn't just for kids. And so uh, there was kind of, if you put those two guys together, I think there's kind of this issue that we have as sinners where as we age and as we go through the same events over and over and over again, Sometimes our sinful flesh will start to kind of minimize them. Or the wonder of what God has done will start to diminish a little bit, or it can. And I think our text for us today, I think, pushes back against that. And, uh, and I'm not denying in some senses when you become more mature, uh, things change a little bit, right? But uh, Paul is kind of... In the book of Romans, he's crescendoing, right? Uh, as he moves through, and he's now in chapter 13 of this epistle lesson, there is a crescendo of faith. He says, besides this, you know the time that the hour will come for you to wake from sleep. Right? Our sinful flesh can make us kind of start to sleep on some of the things that God is doing, right? But he says this, salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. If I were to combine maybe the Old Testament with this epistle lesson, I think the picture for us in the, in the church year is kind of like this. Uh, the Old Testament lesson talked about Jerusalem being lifted up as a mountain and all the nations streaming to it, right, and ascending unto the Lord. And, and really, I think this is what our faith life, our journey from uh, being a, a little tiny kid, right, all the way until... You're an old kid, right? Ready to go uh, to heaven. It's kind of like we're ascending a mountain. And every year you go around and around. And you see a different side of it, right? And you come to the birth of Christ and you're like, wow. Right? Isn't this amazing? How God descends into our world as a baby born as a humble king. Uh, even here in Advent, we see uh, a picture of uh, Jesus riding in as a donkey, right? Well, that's Palm Sunday, but that's all right. We can see it in Advent too, right? And so we see this other story of Jesus and how he comes as our humble king. And then uh, you get to uh, Good Friday and Monday, Thursday, and you see Jesus give himself unto us and suffer on our behalf and then you get to easter and the joy that that is right and it's another part of the mountain and you see that and that's one that we talk about all the time right but jesus has conquered and you get to wonderful events like ascension and pentecost you see how god gives his holy spirit for the blessing of the church and we keep going around and around and around and around and there is a crescendo it's not a diminish in our faith, 
It's building on one another. Again, we see the same events over and over and over again, but we see the faithfulness of God for his people, and it is not just for the kids, right? It is for all of us. A wonderful joy. And he said, this reality for you, salvation is nearer now than when you first started up the mountain. (laughs) We don't know when Christ is coming again, when his true advent will be, when he comes and descends upon us, right? But Paul, as he is rejoicing that salvation is so near to us, he says, the night is far gone, right? The darkness is that we left as we uh, came to the heavenly Jerusalem, as we came to the kingdom of God, that darkness is gone and the day of Christ's salvation has come. So let us cast off the darkness. This is kind of like what Peter says in 2 Peter when he talks about the new heaven and the new earth, right? He says when Jesus comes, the world is going to be purged of all its sin, Right? It's going to, by fire is going to come and it's going to remove all those things and it's going to be perfect and holy. Right? And so he he says, How then should we live today? He says, Live like the future. Right? If someday you're going to live in God's kingdom, perfect and holy, right? Bring that into your day now. And this is what Paul's saying as he's crescendoing towards the end of Romans, right? He talks about our works, all. Romans, right? Our works are filthy rags, right? We can do nothing to earn God's salvation and his righteousness. No, the righteousness comes from God, right? But he says, in view of God's mercy, his righteousness that he's placed upon you, he says, put aside the works of darkness and walk in the armor of light. Walk properly as in daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. No, he says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the glory of his kingdom uh, more and more and more each day. There's a growth, a crescendo in our faith and joy that we receive from Christ. Um, I've talked about this before, at least in Bible classes, maybe in here, but uh, a couple months uh, ago, we had a staff meeting where uh, Pastor Jim was talking a little bit about uh, the Lord's Prayer and uh, how we get to that part, right? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he says, wow, sometimes it just makes me feel guilty, right? A lot of times we pray the Lord's Prayer and there's someone we're really not forgiving. And we remember Jesus' words where he says, if you don't forgive... You won't be forgiven. All of a sudden, the Lord's Prayer is kind of like a burden as we're praying it. I don't know if you guys ever have that. And so I think we, I know you do, right? Um, it, it hits us, those words. Um, but I think the Lord's Prayer, in a lot of ways, is kind of what Paul's talking about here. And Martin Luther does a great job at the beginning of, uh, of the prayer, kind of helping us understand what we're praying for, right? So we say, thy will be done. And in his explanation, I, I think a lot of you kind of remember this, right? He says, God's will comes even without our prayer. That's so great. Right? We don't, do you have to pray for God's will to come? I mean, God's going to do his will. He's God. I mean, that's part of being God is that his will will be done, right? But Luther says, right, but we pray that his will will be done amongst us also. So really what we're praying is not that God's will would be done, but that God's will would fill my life, my sphere, that where I'm walking, right, that God's will would be done, his declared will, right, the things he's told me to do. And uh, we didn't read that part, but uh, Paul kind of talked about really what this gets into is putting on the deeds of light is, is to walk in God's commandments, to walk in his declared will, right? So God, let your will, what you've declared to be done, let it be done in my life today. Let it be done in my home. Let it be done in my community where I'm about, right? And then he does the same thing with God's kingdom. Well, God's kingdom comes even without my prayer, I mean, it's not like I prayed and then Jesus came as a baby, right? I mean, God said it would happen and it happened, right? God's kingdom comes. Uh, Whether you come here or not, 
forgiveness of sins is going to be given to who is here. God's kingdom comes, right? But we pray that it will come to me. That God's kingdom, his word and his sacraments and his care in Christ will, will come to me. That I will walk on the path and see every moment of Jesus' coming. That I'll experience it. That's what we're praying for. But you keep going through the prayer and, and Luther kind of moves off of that. But uh, I think you could carry it all the way through. Give us t- this day our daily bread. And we just got done with Thanksgiving. We're thankful for God's provision. Right? We recognize every single day God provides. Even in the hard times, he provides for us. Right? But in times of plenty, God is the hand that provides. And simply we say, God, provide in my sphere. In some ways, it's like we're picturing what is is it going to be like in, in heaven. Every single need is always cared for. I'm simply asking God, let my needs be cared for today. And that also affects, well, God to help take care of the needs of my children, right? Help take care of the needs of my neighbors and my community. And uh, that they too would see that you are a God that provides. Uh, and so we pray for that. And then you get to that hard one, right? Forgive us our sins, our trespasses. What is it going to be like in God's eternal kingdom with sin? Every last bit of it is put away. It, and it's not like sometimes, we, it's not like God forgets it, right? He's dealt with it by his son on the cross. And that is why there's a crescendo in our faith. Because every year we see more and more how God, because I, you know, every year I got more sin. That's got to be put away. And I get to experience my Lord does that. He puts it away. And so when I pray, I say, as my sin for all eternity is going to be put away, Right? God put it away for me today. That in my sphere, all sin would be put away and dealt with. And so, yes, that matters for me, but probably going to matter for those who sin against me, the people I rub shoulders with throughout my day. God put away that sin too. The sin that I commit against them helped me to confess to them when I'm wrong. And whether or not they confess, also God worked to put away their sin from my life so that I might have the joy of a God that forgives like it will be in heaven. Uh, And you can just keep going, right? Deliver us from evil, uh, temptation, man, get that away, right? Um, God, isn't that what Paul's talking about when he says, put on the Lord Jesus? In a lot of ways, it's, it's our Lord's prayer. We go to God and we say, God, cover us with your son, Jesus. Yes, we're looking forward to his coming at Christmas. I don't know why I'm pointing there, right? Uh, well, candle maybe, right? Uh, Christ candle, right? Um, uh, yes, we look forward to his coming at Christmas with ever-increasing joy. But we also pray today, come Lord Jesus, fill my life with you. Yes, we go round and round and around. (laughs) But with ever-increasing joy of a God who brings us to walk in light, set aside the things of darkness, and to clothe us with his Son, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. This time, I invite you to rise as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We thank you for your gifts and offerings to support the ministry of St. John's. Also a reminder, our love offering envelopes uh, for November go to support the contact center. We sing our offertory, we give thee but thine own. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, to rescue us from the dangers of this dark world by the advent of your Son, Jesus, that we may ever walk in his light and learn the ways of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, though we do not know the day or hour of your Son's appearing, grant that we would always be prepared by sending us faithful pastors and teachers who boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to us, and that we may be constantly encouraged and built up in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. O God of Jacob, you have established your kingdom as a beacon to call all nations unto yourself. Teach us to walk in the light of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of love, visit our homes and defend us from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness that husbands and wives may love one another and raise their children in the faith of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Lord, you are the authority to whom all temporal authorities must bow. Give wisdom and godly insight to our president and our governor and all who make, administer, or judge our laws. Grant peace among nations that swords may be beaten to plowshares and spears to pruning hooks. Lord, in your mercy. In compassionate, Lord, look with mercy upon the sick. Visit them during these Advent days to comfort them with your saving gospel. If it be your will, grant healing and peace. We lift up to you those that we name in our own hearts before you today. Lord, we ask that you be with those uh, on our prayer list, those battling cancer, with Jared, Jean, Beverly, Lindy, Emily, Brian, Laura, Ron, Vonda, Emily, David, Jeremy, Tiffany, Bev, Stan, Julie, Jody, Susan, and Linda. Lord, also those battling other health issues, be with Andrew and Jet, Teresa, Brevin, Richard, Bill, Opal, Paula, Tara, Walter, Chris, Quinton, and Pearl. With Lois, David, Stan, Diana, Angela, Sandy, Ruth, Steve, Jan, Harold, Maxine, Robbie, Colette, David, Alvin, Becky, Stacy, Rhonda, Linda, Donna, Lynn, Jerry, Trevor, Dee, Daryl, and Jackie. Lord, we ask that you be with those who mourn. Uh, be with the family of Dale Hauk upon his death. Grant them uh, encouragement and hope in the resurrection of Christ. And Lord, we ask that in, uh, for all whom we pray, Lord, in your mercy. And draw us unto yourself, O Lord. Gather around the holy body and precious blood of your Son in the sacrament of the altar. Sustain us in saving faith that we may eat and drink for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. O loving Father, you alone know the day and the hour when our Lord Jesus Christ will come again in glory. Keep us steadfast in the one true faith that we may ever be ready for his reappearing. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to rise as we continue with our service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, 
for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, had bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Given for you this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
We rise and sing. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. That on the day may together the Lamb and his kingdom, which hath no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn. couple announcements. Well, I'll let you go, Josh, because you might have more of these. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. 
Uh, just be aware of uh, Sunday School Christmas Chris, cr Children's Christmas Special, uh, December 18th at 6 p.m. Please be aware of uh, the rehearsals, the practices on Saturday. Those are Saturdays, the 3rd, the 10th, and 17th. So just be aware of that. There was a sign-up registration form sent out. If you're still looking for that, please come find me, and we'll get you taken care of. All right, what's next, I guess? Well, you want to go to the next slide. Yeah, um, this coming Thursday, the Holiday Festival Lights Parade. Uh, parade walkers and carolers are desired, and so that will be uh, uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. And so if you're willing to join us, uh, we invite you to that. And then also the next four Wednesdays, we have our midweek Lent uh, midweek worship services, uh, either 10 a.m. or 7 p.m., and so I invite you to that also this coming uh, Wednesday. Uh, also be aware with the special Advent present, uh, Bible presentations that we now start doing, uh, one in the morning. It says 9 15 a.m., but it's probably going to be closer to 9, and then also be aware of the one in the evening at 5 30. Um, I would highly encourage, um, if you don't want to cook food, uh, we're going to have lots of food here Wednesday night, so please be here at 5.30 for food and the Bible presentation to get your heart and mind focused on who is Jesus for this Advent Christmas season. And then one last announcement I have is that uh, there is a table with mite boxes uh, where uh, you can drop those off uh, this week or next week. And then, Josh, you can talk about gift. All right. Thank you again very much, Pastor Levi. Gift is, well, in about 15 minutes, um, focusing on Advent and divine worship service. So we have donuts in there. We have coffee in there. We have drinks. So come on in, and it will be a, quite a good time. Also, please be aware that the kids' uh, big Christmas party for our third through fifth graders is December 10th, which is a Saturday. And that is from 11.30 to, I believe, 2 o'clock around there. And there was a registration form signed up sheet sent out for that, too, if you're looking for that or if you have not seen that yet. Uh, please come see me. But be aware that that is happening again this year. And I think that's everything for me. God's blessings, everyone.